Okay guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we multiply fractions. Multiplying fractions is definitely the easiest one of the four operations because all we do is you multiply the top numbers and you multiply the bottom numbers. So if we take the first example here, 2 thirds times 5 sevenths. Multiply the top, 2 times 5 is 10 and 3 times 7 is 21. Okay, so nice and simple there. Next example, exactly the same thing. Times the top numbers, so 6 times 1 is 6. Bottom, 7 times 3 is 21. Now hopefully in this case you've noticed that you can simplify and you should always simplify your answers. Um, most of the time in the exam questions I will tell you to simplify, but just out of habit, get in the habit of simplifying. So what's the highest number that goes into 6 and 21? Well, that's 3. So I'm going to divide both of these by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then 21 divided by 3 is 7. OK? So multiply the top, multiply the bottom, get an answer, and then simplify it. If you have two mixed fractions, like so, always, always convert them back into top heavy. So 1 times 5 is 5, add 3 is 8, and the denominator, the bottom number there, stays the same as 5. And convert this one to top heavy or improper. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So 5, and again, that bottom number, the denominator there, stays the same. Once you convert them, just do exactly the same thing we did in our first two examples here. 8 times 5 is 40, and then 5 times 2 is 10. And again, you can simplify. This one here is actually a really nice one. 40 divided by 10 is 4. Okay. <clears throat> now, you might have something like this, where you have a whole number times by a fraction. Don't be put off by that. All we do is we look at the whole number, and we convert that into a fraction which is simply 6 over 1. Why can we do that? Well, 6 divided by 1 is just 6. You're not actually changing the question, you're just converting it into a fraction. So 6 divided by 1 is just the same as 6, but because it's now a fraction, I can multiply the top. So 6 times 4 is 24, and then 1 times 5 is 5. Now, if you get a top-heavy fraction as an answer, again, try and simplify it, but also put it back into a mixed fraction. So how many times does 5 go into 24? Well, it goes in 4 times. What's left over? 4. And don't forget the denominator stays the same. I'll say that again. So 5 goes into 24 4 times. With 4 left over, denominator stays the same as 5. So that's multiplying fractions. Now, you don't have to do it this way. This is just something that can speed up simplifying the answers or getting to the answer. It's called cross-cancelling. So what we do when we cross-cancel is look at the diagonal here. So 7 and 14. If it helps, think of the multiplication as, as arrows pointing to the diagonals. So 7 and 14 and 12 and 3. So what we ask ourselves, is there a number that goes into 7 and 14? Well, hopefully you can spot that 7 goes into both of them. If that's the case, you can divide both of them by 7. So I'm going to cross out that 7, and 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. So I've changed the 7 to a 1, I've changed the 14 to a 2. Exactly the same thing here. Look at these two as a diagonal. Is there a number that goes into 12 and 3? Well, yes, there is. 3 goes into both of them. So 12 divided by 3 is 4 and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I've actually changed the question to be 1 quarter times by 1 half, which is obviously a lot easier. 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so it's just a quick way of simplifying as opposed to doing it at the end. We'll do another one here. So this time, 7 and 1. Well, I can't do nothing with that. However, I can do something with the 6 and 3. 3 goes into both of them, so I'll divide the 6 by 3 to get 2, and divide the 3 by 3 to get 1. So I change my question 
to be 2 sevenths times 1 over 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, 7 times 1 is 7. And you might recognise that from our question over here. So instead of simplifying at the end, I've just simplified by cross-counting at the start and therefore got the same answer, 2 sevenths and 2 sevenths. Exactly the same thing here. I've got 8 over 5, 5 over 2. So this is just top heavy, taken from this example here. I'm going to cross cancel again. Looking at the diagonals, 5 and 5, obviously 5 goes into both of them. So I divide by 5 to get 1, and divide by 5 to get 1, and 8 and 2. What number goes into 8 and 2? Well, 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So again, I'm changing my question to make it a bit simpler. So 4 over 1 times 1 over 1. Really easy there. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. And again, 1 divided by, sorry, 4 divided by 1 is 4. So it's just another little thing that you can do to help you simplify at the start where the number is a little bit easier to work with as opposed to doing it at the end. But that's multiplying fractions. Hope that helps.